This episode of On the Line is presented to you by Living.Fit, your one stop for all your fitness needs. Make sure you go download the app Living.Fit today. Now here's the show. Welcome to On the Line. Today is Friday, April 29th. We've got a great show for you guys. we got Tanner, the bulldozer bozer, but first and foremost, listen on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, listen on Apple, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, or any podcasting platform, hit that follow button, maybe leave a review, that'd be pretty cool. But anyway, uh, we got Tanner Bozer on, super raw, super raw, very, very fun interview with him, uh, we talked about what he pulled out of his last fight, um, talked about like his interactions with reporters and like the actual mindset you should have as a fighter and how like, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a fighter telling yourself you're going to win the title one day. It might be a little delusional. That's just a little little mindset for you going forward. But anyway, so we, that, that's a fun interview. Uh, Chaz Kelly couldn't make it this week, so we do a basic little preview. He gave me some picks. We'll just go over the card super, super quick. And we give out our medals for the week. So uh, without further ado, here is Tanner Bozer. All right, we are joined by a very special guest. He unfortunately couldn't fight this past week at the Canada card. Uh, we are joined by Tanner Bozer. So first and foremost, man, like did it, how much did it suck not being able to fight on the Canada card? Uh, the Canada card being that there was two Canadians on it. Should have been three with you. That's still cats Canadian to me. I guess. Um, (laughs) it sucked, sucked Royal ass. I haven't fought in almost a year. Um, so I've been trying to get a fight since I was trying to fight September, October, November. And then I got the one booked in December. You know, I'm guaranteed three fights a year and I had two last June. So I had that one booked in December and then, uh, new COVID restrictions kind of that fight for me and my opponent, I believe. And I got that stuff sorted out and, uh, got this one booked for April. So now it's been already almost a year. And then I, unfortunately I got injured and I had to pull out. So it sucks. The first time I've ever pulled out of a fight. It's I know we, we a total we, bummer. But the, I think another thing too, is real quick. Like there's people saying like you're ducking so-and-so and like, you just didn't want to smoke. That's bullshit. You, you, just, you do this for a living. Like you need to make money, you need to get those checks. Like why the fuck would you duck your career when you have to make money for your family and yourself? You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, the internet's a terrible place. So they always have a stupid ass take no matter what they're going to say something stupid. Of course I, w- I wanted to fight so bad. Like I need the money, like fucking fierce. So yeah, it's uh, I want to get back in there as soon as I can. Unfortunately, I don't know when that'll be it. That's going to be my next question. So you still don't know? No, I can't train yet. Oh, that sucks. That's brutal. And it, yeah, it's, it's just the worst thing when you just like, I mean, it's been, yeah, it's been almost a year. And by the sounds almost like it's probably going to be, be close to two years based on like what you're saying. No, no, I won't be out for like a year, but I don't know. Oh. Sorry, dude. Got oh, my, no. uh, my shitty <laughs> setup. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know when it'll be. I really don't. I'm hopeful that uh, maybe in the summer or something. Can only hope. At least then, at that point, should be back to like more fans and things like that, more fan events, and it's not just all to Apex. Yeah, that'd be all right. At the same time, I mean, there's the rumor that they're coming to Canada in the fall. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. But I I can't wait until that card. So I'm gonna have to fight before. Hopefully, I mean permitting i'm okay i i hope to be um and then I, I could rattle off a couple but yeah I, I really don't know i don't know when i'm gonna be completely good to go i mean never mind completely like i said right now i can't even train and i don't know i don't know how long i can wait so yeah yeah i'll get you and then what, so like Worst case scenario, though, you just have to get a fight, let's say, in, like, the summer. Let's say the Canada card's happening. Just got to get a quick finish, you know, and just uh, move on into the next one. To get yourself primed for uh, the Canada card. The real Canada yeah, card. Yeah, I mean, Not this fake-ass uh, Canada card that I said. Yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously a, a, an ideal scenario, but we got to wait to see how everything shakes out. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And it seems like, as we you kind of hinted at it, too, it's been kind of just like a shitty luck. Like, you're just supposed to fight, uh, again, you had the two pull out, you had the fight in December, got canceled, then you had a pull out, then you had the pull out. It just kind of feels like, is there a certain, is there a point, like, right now, obviously, you're kind of in the middle of it. Is there a point of view where it's just like, shit, I don't know, like, really, like, when's it actually going to happen again? Because it feels like the next time I get an opportunity, just shit's going to go hit the fan again. No, I mean, I should be those are extenuating circumstances. I mean, hopefully I don't get hurt again. And as for my opponent, yeah, my first opponent dropped out and he got replaced, but I was still supposed to fight. So that's kind of just whatever. 
So, uh, no, I just got to hope that I can get one booked and that I, I heal reasonably soon and uh, can just get it done. Well, so let's have some fun. Let's actually talk about some fun stuff. I know this is, it's kind of a shitty situation to talk about. It's unfortunate. But let's talk. I want to talk about Deuce Vodka. Yeah, the Deuce Vodka bombs. Uh, are you purposely making them pretty much the same drink? I have this this stupid ongoing joke with my friends. Or this This shot that we invented at one point. That was that that Shrek in the swamp where it's just anything green drop shot in like coffee or chocolate pudding if you're gross enough and happen to have it. Anything, anything green drop shot in anything brown and it's supposed to be gross and it's a Shrek in the swamp. So yeah, I've just continuously made the Deuce Vodka shots essentially a Shrek in the swamp. It's funny. <laughs> I was say I like it. I didn't know if that was on purpose or not. Or yeah. I, the last one, you're like, oh shit, it's just the same thing virtually. So like you are doing that on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. And that was another thing. Another drinking kind of related thing is the the the, the uh, slonkers. And you actually mm. you you just straight up drink the eggs though usually, right? Just to get us some quick calories, things like that. Yeah, I drink eggs like every night. Um, I don't actually usually mix protein in them. Yeah, not really good. Combo. I'll <laughs> drink a protein shake and then drink uh, six eggs separately. Get the same thing, but putting the. Uh, Putting the uh, protein in the eggs, it, I wouldn't recommend it. Was there a part of you that was like, this might actually taste good and change my life? Or did you know going into Ooh, it? Yeah, this no, is I knew it was going to. It wasn't the taste. It was the, the concrete texture. So like the eggs yeah. don't really absorb the protein very good, you know? So it's just, yeah, chunky. I, was, I didn't know physically if I could drink it. I'm like, this isn't really liquid enough to drink. Like, yeah, I'm drinking chunks, but got it down. No, nah, I don't say that's the worst part of protein. Sometimes it like won't combine with certain things, like when you're trying to be creative with it and it just ends badly just for everybody. Yeah, I usually just do with water, honestly. But if you're, yeah, if you're trying to get fancy, I guess it probably takes a lot of trial and error to know where, where it's going to work good. Yeah, I just I just do milk or water. That's all you can really. That's all I. Yeah. Don't don't hurt what works. Uh, and I know another and then kind of moving on with that. Uh, I don't know. I talk about a different sport real quick. Hockey. I know again, Canada hockey town, hockey country. Uh, is this the year Canada finally gets the cup back? Oh man, I don't know. So I, I mean, I I like hockey and I have nothing against it, but I really don't follow it very closely. I'm a shitty Canadian. Uh. <laughs> I feel like I asked you that last time too. And I would just, maybe I just don't remember. I, I wasn't really sure. I don't, cannot remember if I did or not. So I was like, might as well. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I hope so. The city's happier when Edmonton's in the playoffs, even I I'd take a, I'd take a little bit of time in the playoffs uh, as a big win. The city gets more cheerful. Edmonton clinched a playoff spot, right? I honestly, they, they I, weaseled I don't know. there. I thought they weaseled their way in there at the end. It's Connor McDavid. The NHL will make some calls in and make sure he gets into the playoffs. They're not going to let the Golden Boy not make it. McJesus. <laughs> hey, well, hopefully, then hopefully we get a a little while where they where they're hanging in there. That'd be great. We'll work out a little bit. We'll work out a little bit. So what's just you're in? So you're in Edmonton then, right? Yeah. So what's the what's the temperature like right now in Edmonton? It's a nice day today. It's probably above plus ten. This is Celsius. I don't know what. I, I I don't know the conversions. I'm just a stupid American, so I'll be honest. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a stupid Canadian because I don't really know yours either. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because I was say in India, it's a little nice, but I was gonna say I don't know if it's in Canada. I don't know if you guys have a similar situation where it's like one day it'll be like super nice, and the next day it'll just be like freezing cold, pouring. Oh yeah, snow. yeah. Like we had snow a couple days ago, and now today it's like fairly warm. Okay. I don't know. Just curious. Different parts of, even though we're on the same continent, you know, different parts of the world. And so one more thing before I let you go, um, this is just something I've always been curious about. And I know you shoot it straight. So I'll, I'll actually get a real answer with this. When you go out and do these other interviews and they start talking about like other fighters and stuff like in MMA and UFC, it doesn't really reflect on you. Like you're a heavyweight unranked and they're asking you about like the title picture and things like that. Do you like it when they ask you about that kind of shit? Or are you more or less like, I kind of wish I wasn't asked about this. Cause like, I want to talk about like what's going on with my career and things like that. Oh, I don't really care. Like I can talk about it, but it, it, it doesn't pertain to me. You know, when they, when they want me to like have a very strong opinion on something, I guess, like when they want me to criticize someone for not defending a belt for a long time or should so-and-so get a title shot. I don't care. Uh, any of those fights would probably be good and I'll watch whatever of them happen. And none of it affects me because I'm not in the top 10. So <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't mind the questions about it. But, uh, yeah, I guess don't expect a, an overly passionate answer. That's all. 
<laughs> you don't want to get caught into those little, like clickbait bullshit it sounds like i'm just like tanner boser says so-and-so doesn't deserve the title shot and blah 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 blah, blah. yeah i don't know they they'll find they'll find their way to to clickbait and manipulate your words if they want they'll tr- they'll do it so so they always find a way. But I'm just curious. I was and again like every interview when I listen, like whenever I do my research, I just kind of just listen to every interview. I always hear you be like, "Yeah, I just don't care." <laughs> well, I don't. Well, about a lot of them, like because they ask. They, not about. I like. I like watching fights. You know, I love it. So, I'll have. Uh, I can maybe pick a winner in one. But when do I say I just don't care? Like where? They don't ask sure there you. Are some fights. They, they, they'll ask care. you like, "What do you think about like Connor?" going up and fighting Kamaru Usman. You're like, I don't. Oh yeah. Like there that you just presented a completely hypothetical thing. That's never going to happen. I don't care. I don't have to spend energy dissecting that one. Cause it's not a real thing. It's never going to happen. Like, they're not. Yeah. Like, it doesn't Con- matter. Connor is the money. Ma- he is a money maker still, but they're not just he disrespectful. Is. Like they're not going to do that shit. Like that's stupid to ask. I've always. Yeah. They're, they're not, they, they're not. I'd be very. There's no way they, they no. can't get away with that. Don't even don't not even fathomable. Not even fathomable. No, like that that's just no. like the hypoth- stupid ass hypothetical question like that. I feel like people yeah, ask all the time. Like it's that. just like yes. yeah, exactly. Which we didn't end up talking about. A or bit. or like when they'll start. I guess when they start asking if, oh, do you think so and so is gonna unretire stuff like that? I don't know, man. Like, I ask him, and it's his life. I don't care. It doesn't affect me whatsoever. So it's you're just asking me to hypothesize uh, something that's completely out of the realm of stuff I give a shit about. So, and also out of the realm of like stuff you'd actually know, like this is like, yeah, I have, I don't know. I don't know these people. So yeah. Yeah. I guess so. (laughs) Okay. That's, that's, I knew I'd get a real answer from you because I feel like every single guy gets asked these kind of stuff and you're always just like, I don't know, dude, if you want an answer, like, here's the answer. But it's just like, I always, it's just one of those things where it's like, I've always been like, I don't, I try never to ask about that stuff. Cause I feel like for you guys, like I'm taking your time. I want to ask you about you. I want to ask you like, get to know you. I don't, I don't get shit with your, honestly, like your opinion matters, but like opinions on like that kind of stuff. Like is Conor McGregor going to fight Usman? Like just because what you said doesn't affect literally anybody. Like it doesn't like mean anything, if that makes sense. Like whatever yeah, I say, no one cares. It, you're, just, you're just asking someone's opinion on, to speculate on whether or not something's going to happen, I guess. Yeah, whatever it's, people like, want to ask it all all maybe i have an opinion on some of it or maybe i want to see some of it but i mean if it's something that i don't care about i'll let you know i don't care about it and so i want the i and then i gotta ask about a canadian fighter like charles jordan like he last weekend like he kind of he, he had a great finish great fight yeah. i feel like he's one of the more popular he's starting to become one of the more popular fighters in the ufc community and i feel like he, he used to fight in the promotion like you're, you're you don't you're not like i know you're still associated with it. he used to fight in that promotion i, I think i'm not if i'm not mistaken so it's like you kind of watch him grow up a little bit in like the mma like in terms of like all the canadian fighters you have to pick one right now that you're in terms of like maybe a future champion or anything like that this is just like this is canadian pride i might be asking a stupid question i was asking about earlier but if you had to pick one guy canadian to win a title right like eventually not soon but eventually who do you think has the best chance to reclaim gold for the canadian pride um i I love charles jordan he he's a good dude his coach and my coach actually trained together a long time ago uh so when we both fought on the card in south korea we uh got to know each other a little bit uh he's a he's a good dude and his fights are always exciting but if you i think I'm, I'm pretty confident that if you asked him if he thought he was going to be champion, he would tell you he doesn't care. It's the same as me. He's got that whole pirate thing going on. I was about to say, I just, love the pirate gimmick. It's so fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. And he, it makes sense. You have, to, you have to have a story in your head you tell yourself. And, I mean, that's what he's doing. He wants to – he gets the contract to fight somebody. He goes and he takes them out. He takes the money and he goes home. I love it. I that, love it. That's, that's – along the lines of how I think too. That's, that's all I, people, people outside of it always want you to care so much about legacy or becoming the champion, but maybe a few good paydays is all some of us fucking want, man. (laughs) So I, I, uh, I respect Jordan a lot. And I think if you asked him if he was going to be the champion, he would tell you he doesn't give a shit. And I'll tell, I'll tell you, I don't give a shit. None of us are in the top 15, me, Jordan, Mario, there's a, there's a bunch of those, uh, the new guys that are looking good, Mallet and Johan Laness or whatever fights this weekend. And, and, uh, there's, we got some girls that are doing okay, but there is no Canadian in the top. 
who, who, like, I mean, who's the Canadian in the top 15? Is Misha Serkinov in the top 15, maybe? She like, might be. That's a guy. So oh, well, Misha... that shows how stupid I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. Um, I don't think there's any Canadians in the UFC that are, that are posed to have a, a great significance on the title picture right now doesn't mean that some of the us or some of them can't be but right, right now it would be a completely just to throw in a throw in a dart at a board blindfolded man there's no one none of us are are in that sort of talk or trajectory and i think that's fine the canadians all just give fun fights a lot of the young guys are just fun fighters which is literally all you can ask for if you're a fan like it is it is entertainment at the end of the day fighting is just a form of entertainment you know yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It's it's what some people want. Some people go in talking about being the champion, and and maybe uh, it's not for everybody. Some people go in there and they want to just have exciting fights, or they want to win more than they lose, and and they're not going out there. They're, if you go out there and you tell everyone you're going to be the champ, and it doesn't look like you're going to be the champ, you just look like a fucking idiot. Yes, yes. There's so, certain guys out there, like in terms of like records and like how they fight and things like that. It's just like there's just no way. So saying you're gonna be champ is just kind of like not fake, but like obviously you gotta have like that mindset. But just go out there, you're a fighter. Go out there, have fun, be be, be exciting for the fans, you know? No, you, you can't you can't think you're gonna have fun out there either. Sometimes you're having fun, but it's not always fun. And yeah. I would rather win a boring fight than lose an exciting one because I get twice as much money. That's so I'm, I'm not doing absolutely everything for the fans, but I, I think that on any given day, I have a chance to beat anyone in the world. I don't think out of 10 times, I have much more than one time, maybe out of that 10 with a couple of the very top guys, but I could get it. I could knock them out. I could catch them. That's how it works. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm the best in the world because I've lost uh, a couple times in UFC and it would be ridiculous of me to make that claim. So if I sat here and told you I was going to be the champ, I would look like a fucking moron. <laughs> and I think that that goes for a lot of, a lot of people. I, I think that it's, it's okay to have a goal that normal people don't understand, which isn't even a goal. It's a job. We all have jobs. If my job is to go in there and fight and I successfully do that. And I'm, I'm able to, win more fights than I lose and stay in the UFC for a uh, reasonable amount of time. And I can accumulate a little bit of money if I'm able to fight frequently enough, then that's successful. No, every job everybody does, who's the best in the world at it? Are you the best interviewer in the world? Hell no. Right. And I'm going to sit so, here and admit that. Like, I know I'm not, I know I'm not the right. best in the world. I know I'm not the best so, in MMA. Like, I don't care. Right on. So there you go. So if somebody, if somebody from the outside wants to ask a fighter if he thinks he's going to be champion and if that guy's like, I don't know, probably not. And then they're like, he doesn't have the right mindset. Well, motherfucker, what do you do for work? And are you the best in the world at it? Because probably not. So you can be pretty successful at something without being the best in the world. And hey, if you end up the best in the world one day, fucking awesome, man. Very few people ever get to that, but that's great. But you can be successful at something and, and have a good career and do it well and be an expert at it and not become the number one best in the world at any given time. And that's fine. That's the, that's the bottom damn line. That's the bottom damn line. No, that's so true though. No, I like when I first started doing this, I remember like one of the first questions my boss asked me, like, do you think you're the best to ever do this? I'm like, absolutely not. And I probably never will be. He's like, that's a terrible mindset. It's like, I don't know. I think that's a pretty good mindset. Gotta be, gotta be realistic here. I know I'm not going to be number one. Like that's never going to happen. At least in my opinion, I don't think it's ever going to happen. No, I, I don't I don't think that any of the guys that actually achieved that spot of number one best in the world would sit here and, and tell you that everybody should think that that they should have the mindset that they're they're going to be the best in the world at something. Maybe I'm wrong, man. Maybe there are people who who set their mind to that and it works for them. And that's great. But that ain't me. And I, I don't know. I, I think a lot of people are kidding themselves and setting themselves up for failure. You know, I get. You got a lot of kids telling you, hey, man, I'm going to be the UFC champion. Hey, kid, get in a gym and start training. Like you're kind of putting the cart before the horse here. You know, it's OK to have dreams and to want to do something. But you have to set realistic expectations and goals. 
little notches, little steps. Yeah. You know, you, you shoot for the moon, but you don't actually have a plan how to get there. You're, you're going to be in trouble. I think a lot of conceiving, believing and achieving out there, you know? Yeah. It's just kind of what is pushed nowadays, I guess, or taught and, it is what it is. Uh, some people, maybe it works for some people and, and maybe some people get to be the best in the world at whatever they're doing by thinking and seeing and believing and achieving. And that's fantastic. But I can't, I can't pick for you what Canadian's going to be a uh, champion because none of us are close. Yeah, well, you know what? That's a great, that's a great way to loop around and like kind of end this thing out. So uh, before I let you go, uh, if, you, if anyone wants to thank, especially holding you, holding you together for the past year, I thought if I go ahead and, Let's thank them away. Uh, I got Axe Monkeys to thank, a sponsor of mine. Um, got an event coming up here uh, on May 4th, uh, an axe throwing event in Edmonton. So if you're watching this in Edmonton, you got nothing to do that day. Come on down, throw some axes and uh, break some stuff. There's a rage room. You can just break a bunch of shit, which is pretty fun. Stress relieving in its own way. Uh, I got Paul Pedal Services and I got Premier Built Garages. And... Um, yeah for now that's uh my sponsors and um hope i uh hope i can talk to you before or after a fight soon oh for sure we definitely will one more qu i have actually one question you, you intrigued me what do you break in the break room like what what is there to break just like windows uh, and shit? they'll have like they'll have like yeah there'll be like dishes and small things like that but there's also big appliances or like tvs or whatever big uh cabinets fuck printers fax machines anything anything they get in that's uh, large and breakable and you have a series of tools you can break shit with you know bats crowbars sledgehammers yeah it's fun that's pretty kick-ass <laughs> yeah all right all right man appreciate your time as always uh glad we can hammer this thing out uh and hopefully we can do it before your next fight whatever it is so for for us for tanner always love talking to my man tanner uh one of my favorites uh super raw super super in your face super uh he doesn't hide anything. He's the man. I love him. Uh, he's just the man. So uh, before we get into the biggest <laughs> UFC preview, uh, let's go on in, into our medals for the week. I'm going to start with my bronze. Uh, for those of you in Canada listening who may not follow the NFL, uh, if you watched the NFL draft last night, you might have been like, why are there so many sad stories? Why is every prospect being told about their saddest <laughs> Well, my bronze medal goes to ESPN producers for trying to pull out the hardest, worst moment in every single prospect's life and putting it on the biggest stage of them all. Uh, probably the best day of these it. kids' lives. The probably the best kid days of these kids' lives. They make sure to remind them of the worst day of their lives. So uh, shout out ESPN for trying to like end the mouse for uh, jerking tears, uh, both happy and sad. So uh, shout out ESPN producers. We make fun of them for it, and they still do it every year. And they've gotten worse with it. So I think they hear they us, do. and they're trying to make it like let's find even worse. Let's dig deep. It's like. You know? Oh, this kid's had, this kid's at the highest of highs right now. Let's just punch him in the dick and bring him down real quick. Remind let's him of let's remind the him how he had parents. Or... Let's say let's remind him how his parents died <laughs> in a plane accident, and then his foster parents died like a month later. It's just like let's just destroy him. <laughs> oh, he he had this dog for fifteen years, close as hell with this dog. Yeah, just died, got ran over by a car. Yeah, Too literally bad. before the draft, Sorry. the dog died. Sorry, tough shit, dude um harrison your yeah. gold bronze 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 medal my bronze medal yes uh so going off that since it is again nfl draft night and that we uh were recording be uh be prepared for some blazing hot takes tonight and my bronze medal mm. does go to those hot takes mm. because people are just gonna be unhinged with them i'm sure tomorrow morning we'll be hearing some wild shit out of uh, brother skip's mouth mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. Stephen a will surely have have his say We'll have Shannon Sharp mouthing off. It's going to be interesting. People are going to be saying some of the dumbest shit imaginable. And sometimes, every once in a while, you get someone who's like Nostradamus out here will predict someone's career to the T. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Twitter uh, tomorrow morning or when this episode comes out this morning. So, so the, hot takes. What my hot take, and this is what I've been sitting on, I've been brewing on it, uh, for the NFL draft is remember I forget what year it was when EJ Manuel got like randomly drafted like 13th pick oh, yeah. or whatever. I have a very strange feeling where I get something very similar this year because the quarterbacks like there's one who's like obviously a top 10 even top 15 talent. It's more or less people being desperate for uh, a quarterback. So yeah. um, I don't know. I think we'll, we'll have something kind of crazy. I think happen in this draft. Just don't know what it is. Can't put my finger on it. 
uh, would be funny if that punter gets drafted in the first round. That'd be fucking crony. That'd be funny. Please, uh, that, I would that love that. Happen. That won't happen. The, the I, most I I'll know see what is happened, a third round. But... Third round's the highest I can see it happening. Um, but let's just go on. I, I want to get. You want to what? I want to get to a time where uh, kickers and punters are being drafted in the first round like it's nothing. Like, imagine first overall in like thirty years, and from a uh, I don't even know some random ass school in the FBS, we select. Punter, Pat McAfee Jr. Pat one. McAfee Jr. Yes, Pat sir. Pat McAfee Jr. with the first overall pick. So moving on to the silver medals of the week. Uh, mine goes to Elon Fanboys. Whether you love it, you hate it. Elon Fanboys, they're having a week. Uh, their dad, their savior, their um, cum dumpster, whatever you want to call it. Elon Musk, <laughs> he bought Twitter. Everyone's acting like the world's going to change. Um, on this show, we don't think literally anything's going to change. I don't, no. I don't Some people might come back on Twitter. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Cool. Whatever. Who cares? Whatever. Uh, Elon fanboys are having a week. Uh, daddy bought a company. Daddy's in charge of Twitter. And all of a sudden free speech is like happening. I don't know. But uh, shout out Elon fanboys. They're already so annoying. <laughs> right. uh, they're, they're part of the most unhinged group on the internet. Oh, I swear. When you talk about like, if we need to do like a tiers of like the worst, like fan. Yes. It just yes, like can go through absolutely. a list of that. We can do that in the summer when there's just baseball. Yeah, it, there's so much to that iceberg we could go down, and it's insane. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. So your silver medal for the week? My silver medal goes to American English. Uh, okay. Because I, w- I was just scrolling through Twitter earlier today, you know, reading it like the newspaper as per. As we all And, the, yeah, I saw this, t- like, tweet of an article from 2017 where a kid being interrogated said, give me a lawyer dog. And a, a judge ruled that he was literally asking for a lawyer dog. Like, how, how do you get to that conclusion? Like, what the fuck? It's it, we, like people throw around the term dog as a term of endearment or like as a nickname so frequently that people, you should just imagine that he's saying like, get me a lawyer dog or my guy or bro. Like, Tell me, dude. Well, who, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Who the what the hell is a lawyer dog? Like I don't. I do. They're service dogs. They they be they they really do be working out there. They're they're Maybe. putting into effort. Dude, there's a lawyer dog. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go on and move on into our gold medals. My gold medal goes to the rock community. Like, why, why are you picking the rock community? Well, um, Machine Gun Kelly decided uh, they oh, were mean God. to him, and that he's decided to move back on to rap. Um, so first off, I would love to give it to the rap community too. Shout out them because they're we're all they're already rejecting Machine Gun Kelly. Yes. No, you no stay in rock. Rock's like no, we don't want them. You take them. Um, so I'm expecting MGK to go in the country next. Um, but shout out the rock community for getting rid of Machine Gun Kelly. Um, I I I, for, I, I, I forgot he stopped making rap and went into rock. Uh, yeah, it shows how much I really give a fuck about it. But I never really liked his music. I just remember when Eminem literally dissed him out of rap. And then he wanted to yeah. rap. People, for, people forget like, he was a rapper until Eminem ended his career in rap. He, he really went from Eminem fanboy kind of thing, like oh he was a oh, he, he was a he Eminem. was like uh he was like a white Eminem. He was an Eminem yeah, one or like and or like one of those Yellow Wolf kind of rappers too. You remember him? Yeah, 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 yeah like that. And then he went to rock and just made the worst emo music imaginable. Yeah. So I assume if he goes to country, it's going to be like the most standard. I'm going to go get a beer. And I'm, I'm going to get my beer out of my truck after I beer. suck my wife's blood out of her throat. Yeah, some some shit like that. Did you see? Did, did you speak, would... picking up? Did you see that? How like Megan Fox is like we 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 only share our blood only for sacrifice rituals. I everything I learn about them, I learn against my will. I wonder if it's there's anyone who horrible. dated Megan Fox sees her now is like, who the fuck? <laughs> what they, they're probably to her? looking at they're looking at it like, God damn, I didn't jo- dodge a bolt. I just dodged a nuke. Dude, what that, the hell is going on I here? I don't know if she's just crazy for MGK or if she's crazy or whatever. I don't know. I still I think, think it's a combination of both of them. The best quote's always think... gonna be like when they first met and she's like, You smell like weed. I am weed. <laughs> <laughs> He's, such a, he's of all, such a loser, dude. He's such a loser. I would, the pe- people who say they are weed like that are the worst kind of stoners. Someone who is weed oh. would be Seth Rogen or Snoop Dogg. 
Yeah, not they're, MG they're, goddamn they're, they're, Kelly. They're a walk. They're a walking embodiment of ganja. Um, yes. So Harrison, yes. Let's, let's, let's keep let's keep it moving. Keep it moving. Too much MGK talk, even though it is so easy. Yeah, to make. Anyone can make fun, anyone can make fun of him. I can go into like a sixth grade classroom and probably make a fun of him. Uh, Harrison, oh, easily. your gold medal for the week. My gold medal goes to the man, the myth, the legend, Trey Young, because not only did he just go out there and produce a shitter in an elimination game against the Heat, in which they did wind up getting eliminated, but he also fell for a butt crack sports tweet. Mm. From like a fake quote from Draymond Green. Mm. Wait, like, ball sack? No, butt crack sports. Oh, there's, there's a ball new sack one? and butt crack sports now too. Howard. Yes. P- oh no! You just look at the name. It, think before you tweet, folks. Especially after dropping a sh- like a, a horrible performance like that. Did you know he think had more? He tweet. had more turnovers than made baskets in that entire series. I know that's insane. That's a this was clearly not the same Trey Young as last year. Which, no, he fell back I'm, down to earth. He fell back down to earth. That's what really happened. Yeah. I've never. I've always been anti. Not anti Trey Young. I always thought a he Trey was Young too reckless. I'm, yeah, I'm a Trey Young truther. Like I'm a Grayson yes. Allen truther. Um, exactly. Exactly. He. Uh, I just never thought. I thought he was too reckless. I don't think he's Steph Curry in terms of, like he can pull up from wherever. Um, he's he's a lot. He's more often than not a bad version of Steph Curry than he's like a good yes. Steph Curry. So he's what everyone thought Steph Curry was going to be in terms of like just taking terrible shots. You're like, what is this guy doing? But uh, he's a, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Trey Young truther. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah. He's that's, you can't fall for a butt crack sports tweet. How did that, it's, it's right in 2022 there. in 2022 when you grew up with social media, how are you that fucking stupid? We grew up on Barry McCockner four year letterman. And now we got ball sack sports doing the shit. We got butt crack sports jumping on the bandwagon. We've had fake news for God knows how long, and you still fall for it. If you're stupid enough to see it, if you're too stupid to like fall for it, dude, like it's your fault. Like it's that's yeah, that's on you. It's, that's on, it's you. on you. It's on you. All right, let's go on into this uh, quick, quick, quick UFC preview. Uh, unfortunately, Chaz couldn't be here. Um, he he had the roofing business has no end. Uh, there's a storm in Texas, so you know he's just you know being the roof Chris Santa Santa roofs. I don't know, slinging out roofs. Um, so let's go on in. Let's, let's go through the quick through the card. So the one thing me and him both agreed on. We actually talked about it last week, before, uh, right after we cut off air. We both love Rob Font, literally not even biased. And this was sent me before telling him we were going to interview him. Uh, we just both love Font in the spot. Rob is he really is one of the better boxers. Uh, Cheeto really was technically getting outboxed and out stroke striked. If you want to call it that by uh, Frankie Edgar before you can make the case he was also winning the fight before Cheeto hit him with the up kick, the uh, front kick or whatever. So um, Rob's pressure and striking, I just think is a lot better than Marlon Vera, Cheeto Vera. Uh, the grappling aspect, I know there's some people out there saying Cheeto is like better. I think it's kind of a wash. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Fonts. You just never really see Font use it because of his uh, striking. Um, so I just love Font in the spot. I don't understand how the fuck it's minus 140. It feels stupid. Um, I, I just think Font's going to drag him into deep waters, finish him late. Fuck, he might finish him early too. I know Cheeto's ever been finished. He survived power of uh, Song Yudong, but I don't know if he can survive five rounds with Rob Font. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I love Font in this op- in this instance, um, and so does Chaz. Uh, so I know this is out of order though. Um, so we the next one he told me he said he loves uh, Jocko, uh, the Polish Jocko. I don't okay. even say I don't even try to say his first name um, because it's kind of weird and long. Uh, but uh, as as you may not have seen, he's been calling Gerald Mearshart a uh, dick licker, human blanket, <laughs> dick sniffer. Um, but Jocko only has one finish in the UFC. However, Gerald Mearshart has nine finishes in the UFC. Um, I don't think you can be a dick licker if you are getting finishes in the UFC, uh, especially at the rate that Gerald gets finishes in the UFC and Jocko gets as many decisions as he does. So um, Chaz didn't get in specifics on how we liked Jocko. He said, I really like Jocko. Um, so what I like a lot, and I was going to say this no matter what, is I love Gerald Mearshart to win by finish or it's a wash. So, um, Or if it goes to decision, it's a wash. So if Gerald wins by his finish, you win. But if Jocko wins by decision – or Mirashart wins by decision, you get your money back. It's like one of my favorite bets is like plus 110. Uh, that just feels like easy, like 
you either win money or you get it all back because Jocko is not going to finish Mirashart and he's not going to finish anyone of decent quality in the UFC. Um, I wish I could have said that to Chaz, but it is what it is. That's I, that's that's a great bet in my books. Um, back in order, uh, the next few are going to be pretty 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 basic. Arlovsky should be a lot wider. No idea why Jay Collier is even close to being considered like a pick'em. Uh, Arlovsky is old, but he still is a lot better all around, except for the weight department. Uh, he's a lot more athletic, more in shape. He's just going to hit him and drag him to deep waters. Orlovsky by finish. He's going to get another finish again. Uh, moving on to Brito Feely. I like Brito. Uh, I think the line's a little high based on his last performance when he fought like a fucking idiot. Uh, he went too aggressive in the first. He had a massive adrenaline dump after the first. Uh, I think after that ter- after that outing, uh, he'll be a little more patient. Maybe he'll be too patient. I don't know. When you get prospects, um, I think he'll fight a lot smarter this time around. Uh, Gordon Dawson, uh, Dawson's going to win. Nah, I, have, I have no insight. I'm not going to bet it. And the same, in the Brito Feely, I'm not going to bet it either, but the Brito line is wide. Uh, Connolly Elkins, this is another one. Very strong opinion on uh, Elkins. The only reason he's won the past couple fights is because he survived just a fucking massacre in the first like three, four minutes. And then the guy just gasses out so badly. Uh, he's able to finish him with like a choke because the guys are so tired from beating the fucking piss out of him. Uh, I don't think Connolly's going to fight that stupid. I think Connolly will take his time. Uh, he's not going to get into a fucking bloodbath the first round like everyone else. Darren Elkins has fought. Um, and so that's really, really what it is. Elkins really hasn't been very competitive minus the times where he just gets, he kind of just survives an onslaught of damage and <laughs> secures a finish late. Uh, so yeah, I like, I like Connolly in this spot. Uh, then moving, just can, just getting to finish up the card. I mean, honestly, uh, prelims are like, yeah. Uh, rubbing off Sherman, if you want to lay, Romanoff are the biggest like odds in like UFC history at minus like twenty five hundred whatever it is. It was just absurd. Like go for it. I mean Sherman's not going to win. You're you are literally lighting money on fire if you take Chase Sherman. Uh, you can take Romanoff by finish. I have no idea what the odds are. I didn't even look at it. I just saw minus twenty five hundred. I thought yeah that's right, fuck that. Even though you're probably going to make money no matter what. I don't want to make like a dollar or two dollars. That shit ain't worth it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. De Silva Figueredo, uh, I love baiting. Very, very good fighter siblings because they're never that they're not as good as their brothers. But the public thinks, oh, because they're related to so and so, they're gonna be related better. So Francisco's related to Devison Figueredo, the flyweight champ. Uh, I do the same thing with Valentina Shevchenko's sister. Um, so they, they the public just automatically thinks because they're related that they're a good fighter. I'm not gonna say Francisco's not a bad fighter, but I don't think he's gonna beat De Silva. So uh, always fade the always fade the siblings. That's just. My word of advice. And then going through, uh, only other thing I love is Tasso Tayara just because he looks like Bruce Lee. So um, <laughs> Damn. If you, that, 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 that thing went viral a couple days ago. But <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus, bless me. Oh, my God. I guess God loves Bruce Lee, too. I mean, Taro. If you haven't, just look it up. Like you can, you can find it. It was one of the fun. It's one of the funniest thing. He looks just, it's like a reincarnation of Bruce Lee. He's pretty, he's pretty, he's pretty badass. Stop hitting threes, Toronto. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's coming down now. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Toronto. All right. That's what we got for the show. Tuesday, we got Randy Brown on the show. Might have Rob Tuesday. Might have him Friday, but he's coming on if he wins. Even if he loses, he's allowed on. I don't know what he'll feel if he loses, though. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But we have some fun guests coming next week. Um, and next week, uh, unfortunately, Arca won't be here on Tuesday. He He's traveling somewhere. I don't know. But Chaz will be back next week. Uh, for a big UFC 274 card where one of my favorite fighters in history, Justin Gaethje, is going to win the lightweight title. So be prepared. Be ready. Be ready for the human highlight. Uh, so this is, us. This is the show. Let's have a weekend. So- Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me all the way to the end. Uh, I just want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. If you're looking to better yourself, make sure you go to download the app or visit the website, Living.Fit today.